Welcome to our noon, noontime prayer and a reading of the Psalms. I'll be reading from Psalm 4 today. Uh, we've had some technical difficulties. I'm hoping that we have worked through all that. Um, I figured out a couple things at least. And so if this quits working in the middle of it, I'm just going to keep recording and then I'll post it to YouTube and, and put a link on, on our various um, pages so you can get there. But I'm hoping it'll work uh, today. I think I resolved it. We'll see. But uh, welcome today. It's nice to have you with us. Um, my my wife and my mom are sitting here listening to me, so I do have an audience. And uh, um, another uh, incredible day uh, as we read the news or try to stay away from the news. Last night, Nancy and I and Nicole went out outside at 8 p.m., exactly at 8 p.m., and we made loud noises, shouted, and I rang my sleigh bell uh, very loud. And it was to say thank you for all the nurses and doctors. Uh, who are on the front lines fighting this. Um, it amazes me the sacrifices they are making. I heard yesterday, um, I, I'm not sure if it's verified, but I'm pretty sure it's an accurate uh, report that 39 uh, doctors in Italy have died from COVID vi the COVID virus. And uh, that just grieves me. Uh, all around the world, families are suffering. And um, so let's begin with prayer. Kind and gracious Father, I just uh, thank you for this day. I thank you for life today, for the privilege of breathing and, and living and loving and being loved. I thank, that, thank you that we live in your love, that we move and have our being. We move and live and have our being in your love, Lord. And Father, I lift up today all those doctors and nurses and CNAs and the people who are cleaning the rooms. Um, I pray that you would protect them all around the world, Lord, in, in our own state, in our own hospitals, and in New York and California, where the virus seems to be um, spreading so quickly, Lord. I pray that you would give them understanding and wisdom and skill beyond their own capacities that you would provide for them gowns and gloves and protective gear, the PPEs, Lord. I pray that somehow uh, we would get into manufacturing these things quickly so that they can have enough. I pray for the politicians involved in uh, who have an influence in getting this stuff made. And I pray that there would be adequate supply, more than adequate supply uh, for all this gear that they use. I pray for their own safety, Lord, especially those who are in their 40s and 50s and even 60s who are still nursing, who are still doctoring, who are still on the front lines and putting their own health at risk, Lord. Thank you for those 39 doctors, for their commitment, for their sacrifice. As I watch the world spin around again, there are doctors and nurses and CNAs all around the world serving in an in a, in amazing capacity while the rest of us, our duty is to stay home. Our role is to stay home. And so we applaud them. We shout out, thank you. Protect them, Lord. And I pray for all those patients uh, in the hospital who are either in ICUs or going into the emergency rooms or are in the special um, seclusion um, places like the Mercy Ship, uh, the USS Mercy, or the Tent Hospital apparently they've set up. I pray for them that you would comfort them, that you would turn their eyes and their gaze uh, to you, Lord, that they might seek comfort and hope and eternal life in you. Thank you that you offer us that gift or that eternal life as a gift. Your word so clearly says, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, Father, all around the world as people are wondering and maybe wondering about our, our mortality. That you would turn the world's hearts to you. 
all, all these people's hearts all around the world, that you would turn them to you. Father, we cry out to you. We ask for your help. We cry out to you. We ask that you would put an end to this virus, Lord. Thank you that even in the midst of this, even though you have not caused this, this is our own human greed all across the board. In every country, in our own country, in our own cities, in our own counties, in our own lives, Lord, where we have gone out when we should have stayed home. And Father, you have allowed it. And the only reason why I think you, you might allow something like this is that you love us so much that you're calling the world home to your kind, compassionate, and gracious heart. We entrust all the families in our church, in the churches in Gig Harbor that we're praying along with, and I know in uh, the Metau Valley at Twist Covenant and other churches as well, and the other covenant churches in our conference and the other covenant churches across our nation and then all churches everywhere. Father, I know we're hurting. We're questioning what you're doing. There's all kinds of theories that abound. You alone know what you're doing. And I thank you that you are still on the throne of grace. Give the world grace. Give the world mercy. Give it in such a way that we turn our hearts to you, Lord. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, thanks for uh, joining me today for the reading of the Psalms. Today we look at Psalm 4. Uh, some people think that it's a psalm that's connected to Psalm 3, still talking about Absalom and the story that um, we saw yesterday. If you didn't catch it, it's on YouTube. There's a link to it on our Facebook page and a link to it on uh, the personal uh, page for the church. Um, I'm not sure. It doesn't tell us whether it is or not. So, um, Essentially, this psalm has David and has he has adversaries who are um, accusing him and disapproving of him and criticizing him. And sometimes that's a, that kind of constant a drone of criticism against us can be very, very wearing. And so the psalm is in that context. So let's read together Psalm 4. You can follow along with me up on the screen. I chose this uh, video background because it reminds me of uh, a path uh, fleeing uh, from the people of Israel or from his adversaries. And David had spent a lot of time fleeing from his adversaries. So uh, that's why that video is there. So let's uh, read Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. O sons of men, how long will my honor become a reproach? How long will you love what is worthless and aim at deception? But know that the Lord has set apart the godly man for himself. The Lord hears when I call him. Tremble and do not sin. Meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. For you alone, O Lord, make us dwell in safety. So let's take a look at this uh, from the beginning. There is this contrast between David and his adversaries, the people who are criticizing him. So he begins with, answer me when I call, O, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, coffee break. That's better. 
Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Some uh, people, some commentaries I read said that that's um, the God who sees David's righteousness. I think it's not that at all. It says, answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. O God who provides me righteousness. I think uh, David understands that righteousness comes by faith, not of his own effort. You have relieved me in my distress. So he's looking backwards uh, and remembering a time in the past when God had relieved his, his distress. I think that's a Hebrew way of thinking. To find hope in the future, they always look back to the past to find, uh, to remember those times when God was with us in the past. So even today, you can take this um, as something you can do throughout your day, is to remember to your past when God was there for you, when he was so clearly there for you. I can remember multiple times when God has shown up in my life or in our family's life or in my mother's life, or in my daughter's life, or, or in my wife's life, or my own life. And so he says, answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. He's uh, asking God to hear him when he calls out. You have relieved me in my distress, something has happened in the past. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. Hear that, give me grace, be gracious to me. Let that, the power of your grace uh, come upon me and hear my prayer. And so everything that follows now is a, is a prayer of David. Uh, this is a wonderful way to begin our day. It's actually an evening prayer, not a morning prayer. The other one uh, we saw yesterday was a morning prayer. We move on and it says, O oh, sons of men, how long will my honor become a reproach? So he's now talking about these adversaries, O oh, sons of men. Could be Absalom and his the Israelites who were, had turned against David, but we're not told that. So I think this is... Um, any group of, of people that were in David's life who were a reproach to him. What does reproach mean? It, it means to express disapproval of, criticism of, or disappointment uh, in someone. So to be critical. So he had uh, a whole group of people who were critical of him, disapproving him of him, and uh, disappointed with him. How long will you, will you love what is worthless? Um, People who tend to be critical are going after what is worthless. Do you ever have people in your life who are disappointed with you, critical of you, um, disappointed with you, disapproving of you? Uh, I know I have in my life. Um, sometimes it can be very painful. Sometimes words and criticism can hurt, hurt more than uh, the kinds of physical abuses that people sustain. I'm gonna always not going to say that's always true at all. But those words can cut deep. How long will you love what is worthless and aim at deception? So what he's saying is these people have a, a wrong, these men who are adversaries, these women who are adversaries of his, they have a wrong focus. They are loving what is worthless. Um, grumbling and criticism, we, we think of it as kind of a small sin. Actually, it's a very big sin. In I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Because of their grumbling, it says, the Lord sent the destroying a angel and 10,000 of them died because of their grumbling. I'm glad we live under the new covenant, under a covenant of grace. Uh, but nevertheless, grumbling and complaining is still grumbling and complaining. How long will you love what is worthless and aim at deception? So they were deceived about David. Uh, they were not understanding that he was a man of God, a man approved to God, a man who had been chosen as a very young boy to be king. And now he's on the throne and people are crit criticizing him. I think anytime anyone is in political office, no matter what party they are, they're going to sustain a lot of disapproval, criticism, and people are going to be disappointed with them. I think people were disappointed with President Obama when he was in office, and they were critical and disapproving of him. I know that people are uh, certainly disapproving of President Trump, uh, critical of him and disapproving of him. But again, as I, I've said before, we need to be praying for these men and praying for uh, Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell and all of our leaders, our own governor, uh, Governor Inslee and our mayor and our the mayors of your cities and so on. Um, we have a, a privilege of being called. We, we are called to be a kingdom of priests who stand in the gap between people we may not like very much and people we um, might even disdain. But I, I think there's this opportunity for us to understand that for God so loved the world, for God so loved President Obama, for God so loved President Trump, that we get ourselves in line with this 
deep and tremendous and boundless and immeasurable love of God that God has for the entire world, for everyone. And when we get in, in our, ourselves in line with that and let that love start soaking in our lives and soaking our lives in that love, then we start seeing people uh, through a different, different uh, lens. I remember when I was a chaplain in St. Francis, I've shared this before, but uh, I had a, a wonderful um, supervisor. Uh, he was born again, and he knew the Lord intimately. And I would see him cross himself, and I, would, I asked him, so what, what's that about? Why are you crossing yourself? I'm just curious. I, I don't understand why you do that. And he said, well, it is just a tradition of the church. But he says, I found uh, something very helpful in uh, doing that. When I cross myself, I'm drawing a cross between you and me or whoever the person is who's before me. Maybe it's some, someone that he's really having a struggle with or somebody that he's, that's just driving him nuts. And so he draws a cross between um, that person and, our, and himself. In the same way, I don't, I don't do this. I don't draw a cross, but I think of that. I think of drawing a cross between uh, whoever that person is who's disappointed in me, disapproving of me, or being critical of me, and remembering that God loves them. Same with our politicians, right? Um, we need to draw a cross between us and all of the politicians and then start praying for them with a fervency of love that they first might be drawn into the kingdom, that they might be born of the Spirit, that they might come to believe and receive the gift of eternal life, that they might become a follower of Jesus, uh, all of the above. But secondly, that they might learn to walk in the Spirit, to walk in truth, to uh, not walk according to the course of this world. Those are wonderful prayers. How long will you love what is worthless and aim at deception? And then that word sila, which means pause and ponder this. So later in the day when you have time, take out this psalm again, Psalm 4. And when the sila comes, pause and think about what's, what's been said. Um, Moving along, it says, uh, But know that the Lord has set apart the godly man for himself. Who's he talking about? He's talking about himself as king. right? King, this is a, day, a psalm of David. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly man for himself. Um, is he saying that his life is together? No, if we're going back to that first verse, he says, The God of my righteousness. The, so he's looking to uh, God for everything. The godly man is the, the man who lives or the woman who lives as if though God exists and submits to God. That's the godly man. We always think of it as uh, character adjustment, as having that, that right character. But who of us can stand in our right character? Uh, it doesn't work, folks. Uh, godliness is living as though God exists and relying entirely upon him for everything. And so he's talking about that he's been set apart as king. The Lord hears when I call to him because he's been heard because God has set him apart. You know what? We're called saints in the New Testament. Up, up to the cross, uh, the, the primary term for those who were following Jesus was disciple. After the cross in Acts, you have a couple of occasions of the word disciple, and then not another occurrence in the rest of the New Testament. But in, in uh, the word saint, it starts picking up usage in Acts. They overlap. There's one usage in Matthew, uh, but it's talking about the Old Testament saints. And then from er there on, we're called saints. Those, and here's the rub, those who are set apart. And so we too have been set apart by God, um, and the Lord hears us when we call. Yahweh hears us. Jesus hears us when we call to him. So I encourage you to be calling out as one body we can be praying. Praying for the doctors and nurses. Praying for those who are ill. Praying for the families who have lost loved ones. Praying for the elderly among us that they be protected. Praying for our own lives and our, and our finances. And um, There's a lot to call out for or call out to God for right now uh, in our lives. And then moving on, along, it says, Tremble and do not sin. Meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. So now he's giving, these advers he's giving to these adversaries some instruction. He says, Tremble, because you stand before a God who has put me on the throne. And in the same way, tremble, you are standing before a God who has set apart his church as saints. He has set us apart, but he set us apart for ministry. And that is to reach people with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, including caring for their needs. Uh, but primarily, and uh, 
sharing that gospel, sharing our faith, and then secondarily, wrapping it in, in the love that we have in uh, caring for other people's needs, uh, listening to them and so on, befriending them. And so he says, tremble and do not sin. He's asking to stop their grumbling, their complaining, their criticism, their disappointment, their disapproval. Meditate in your heart upon your bed. Have you ever woke up in the middle of the night and you're just wide awake? Maybe the Lord is telling you it's time to meditate. Uh, I know that happens to me. Maybe it's just time to pray. Maybe, maybe it's time to think about your life and, and what, what you are doing. If there's sin in your life uh, today, stop tonight and meditate on it. Ask the Holy Spirit to put it to death in you. He can do that. He's the one who created all things. He's um, in the mystery of the Trinity. The, the, the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters in creation. Meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. Slow down. Stop the frantic pace. Stop all the criticism. Stop all the disapproval. And be still. Ponder your life. And then again we have Selah. Pause and think about this. Then we continue and it says, Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and trust in the Lord. Notice that the sacrifices of righteousness, a right relationship with the Lord, is connected with trusting in Yahweh. You can't separate the two. You cannot have righteousness without trusting in, in uh, Yahweh. The righteousness flows out of our uh, trust of, of the Lord. Many, and then he changes. Many are saying, uh, who will show us any good? These, these same criti critics and these same people who are so disappointed in David are, sh are saying of God, who will show us any good? There's, there's no good right now. David's failed us. Uh, God's failed us. Do you ever feel that way in this, the midst of this uh, epidemic? That people have failed you? And that God is failing us? He's not failing us. And then notice uh, in contrast to that, in response to that, notice what uh, David prays. He says, lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your countenance. The count countenance is your face, is uh, that vision of God's face. Lift up the light of your face upon us. Let us see your glory. It's very similar to what Moses prayed when he says, now show me your glory. And God responds with, you cannot see my glory, but I, I will hide you in the cleft of the rock and I will pass by you and I will proclaim my goodness to you. And then when we see him do it in Exodus 34, he proclaims his na name, the Lord, the Lord God, gracious and compassionate, slow to uh, anger, abounding in loving kindness and truth. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord, O Yahweh. And it ends with this, <clears throat> and I find these verses uh, very helpful in the midst of our uh, pandemic right now. You have put gladness in my heart. We can ask for that. Lord, return gladness to my heart. Uh, I, I, I've had to take a moratorium from watching so much news because I was getting depressed from it. Uh, reading some of the fear-mongering posts on Facebook, and uh, or um, there's a lot of that out there. You have put gladness in my heart. More than when their grain and new wine abound. So he's saying these adversaries, they get merry, merry when they have full barns of grain and they have a lot of wine to celebrate because they're, they're well stocked. Uh, get this, some of us are well stocked with food, some of, of us aren't. And yet uh, it says, you have put gladness in my heart. More than when our pantries are full. And then get this, in peace I will both lie down and sleep. We don't have to be afraid of this. We don't have to be worried. Because, first of all, if you come to believe in Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. Again, truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed, meaning he has already passed. She has already passed from death into life, from eternal death into eternal life. Therefore, because we have such a promise, in peace, we can both lie down and sleep. I can sleep knowing that he's my vanguard, that he's our shield about us. Uh, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. What words for today? For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. It's a frightening thing. I, I go outside, we walk in the neighborhood still. Uh, 
just staying away from people. And it looks like the same world. There's still cars driving by. There's people out in their yards. Uh, there's, And yet there's this little virus that's only with us human beings. It's not really in the air or anything unless you've just sneezed and you're by somebody who's just sneezed. But that little teeny virus has brought such a sense of, of how do I say it, not being safe, of being vulnerable, of being um, uh, fearful and all of those things. And here we have, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. You alone, O Lord. You hear that? For you alone. It's not our, our, going to be our thinking that that will help. But it's thinking on these thoughts, that this is truth. This isn't truth if you believe it. It's already true. Yahweh, Jesus, who says, I am the good shepherd, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was born, I am. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. So who's going to keep you safe in this? The Lord. That safety may include our being translated to heaven. I don't know. Uh, I can't worry about that. But we can take measures on our part to stay safe, like staying home. Um, I think it's a responsibility uh, right now. They know how this spreads. And uh, it stops spreading when we stay home. So again, in peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Make that your affirmation today. Say it to, to each other as a family. Say it out loud. In peace, or uh, even uh, you can start at the top. You have put gladness in my heart. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O, o Lord, make me uh, to dwell in safety. Again, you have put gladness in my heart. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Uh, well, that's the psalm. That's the prayer. Um, you can continue to pray for me as I get ready for Sunday. I hope this has uh, gone live the whole way through. I will know in just a few minutes if it worked. Um, so have a blessed day. I'm praying for all of you. If you want to chat, I'm, I can video chat on Facebook. I can talk on the phone if you need counseling or reassuring word. Uh, I'm trying to reach out to you. Uh, Nancy's trying to re reach out to some of you. And so be blessed in this day. And contact each other. Even though we don't can't be with each other directly, we can talk to each other on the phone. People like Marilyn and Barbara who are uh, by necessity shut up and, and others as well. Um, call them, see how they're doing, talk to them. So th thanks for joining me. I'm going to close with a blessing. <clears throat> 